okay, it's not that bad. Like, come on, man. <laughs> okay, we got a lot of stuff to go over. Triple Z just put out their future of the game, kind of like their ideas, optimizations and whatnot. There is a video for it and I saw them post it, but I don't have time to actually watch the whole thing. So I saw they have a TLDR and I was like, let's just look at that for now. So the TLDR is, it looks like most of the stuff from the 1.2 live stream they mentioned. So adds agent control function, uh, it'll be Caesar or in Bernice, probably when Bernice is out, I'd imagine. And plus you have to have the character too. So, you know, wait till she's actually out. So it says in most combat, most non-combat environments. So I think it's gonna be really clunky and jank when I, when it first comes out, because it's it's it wasn't planned that way. So it's gonna be kind of jank. You might actually like transform back into Bell or Wise if you do a certain action. It'll be kind of jank at first. Um, I imagine there'll be no selfies because they'd have to animate the person's face again. So that's one of those things where it's not going to look good when it's out. You know, it, it's going to take some time to like finalize it. So yeah, let them cook, you know, let them cook. They didn't plan to do that for the game. It was supposed to be Bell and Wise and that was it. So bear with them on that. That's not going to look all that great. Um, the auto fairy thing. Yep. So she'll just be able to get the unclaimed little circle things that you didn't get. Only for an exploration mode, not for like any combat stuff. Battery recharge. So yeah, if you're not playing the game, if you didn't open it up, uh, so just kind of recharge while you're not playing. Yeah, so yeah, most of these things are just the things in the live stream. Blitz mode, no TV board, just get your bounty commissions. And also says, upon clearing the challenges. Oh yeah, yeah okay, same thing, same thing. Adds new ways to obtain notorious hunt materials. Oh, that's not that's different. Once the weekly reward limit is reached, proxies can spend battery recharge to obtain more. Oh my so wait, so we can use the normal three and then use our actual recharge to get more on top of that? Susceptible core skill will be available to outposts. Maybe it's just one extra, because that'd be kind of nuts if you get like multiple. Could you like refresh your recharge and get like as much as you want? Hmm. All right. Well, that's a new one. Uh, number six. In the upcoming version 1.2 main story, an important, an important future storylines, the TV mode will be replaced with story stages as the major means of import, of, an, of experience. Okay. So yeah, they're really trying to step away from the TVs. Yeah. <laughs> Optimization will be implemented in the main servers and future versions. So if you played version 1.1 with the Jane Doe quest, it made sense, right? Because the proxy wasn't involved in that for the most part. They weren't guiding any of their proxies through a hollow. So it was just Jane Doe. My point is that mission was like a special mission and it was just Jane Doe. You were playing as Jane, right? So. That makes sense, but yeah. What this is saying though, is that they're not gonna have it where it, it was in 1.0, where we would always be in the TV mode for our stories. Now it's gonna be playing the actual, you know, the physical character for the, the main story. Like it'll be a setting of walking around or in combat. So I can appreciate that. I know there are players who did enjoy the TV system, but I want you guys to understand there were very few of you. That's just the honest truth. You know, like the majority rules and the majority of people did not like the TV mode. You had the small majority who liked it. You had the people in the middle who tolerated it, but they weren't necessarily happy with it. Then you had people who just didn't like go, it. Go fairy bunny. So the majority of people just did not like it and it kind of, you kind of move them to kind of slowly get rid of it because in the beta, people wanted them to get rid of it. And then the game came out and they were like, why didn't you get rid of it? But maybe it was just too late. Like they were, it was already their main design for the game and they wanted to go with that. So when people didn't like it, they were like, oh no, like we can't really scrap it now. It's kind of a part of the game. So I think it was kind of too late for that. But now they're trying to slowly 
not fully get rid of it, but just dial it back a lot. So they're, they're trying their best, you know? Plans for future optimizations. Number one, we are currently exploring optimization options regarding the shared decibels when agents use ultimate skills in combat. Also, when they continue to optimize logic of enemy lock on features or functions and add more types of enemies with more varied combat animations. Huh. Oh, they're saying, okay, so ultimates, the decibels will be for each agent. That's actually, yeah, that, that, that is a good optimization because that's kind of weird in the game right now. Because basically the way it works is your whole team accumulates decibels. When you hit 3000, you get your ultimate, but you're never really going to use it on Sakaku or like, I mean, unless DPS Sakaku, but but what I'm saying is you're never going to use it on a support. You're always going to use it on the DPS. So it kind of seemed like your ultimate was kind of a special thing because you only got like one every so often. But now everybody's going to have their own gauge for ultimate. So maybe you'll see more ultimates now, you know? And the animation work will actually be useful because you can actually see, you know, your Lucy burst or something like that. <laughs> or your arena burst, you know? Uh, new modes in Halo Zero are currently under development. We will focus on combat diversity, including new changes to combat mechanics. We also will add a more enjoyable TV mode. More enjoyable, they say. <laughs> more enjoyable. All right. <laughs> um, and then new Hollow Zero modes, too. So that's that's nice. That's nice. Essentially, this is going to be like a playground for just like an end game stuff or just like fun, wacky game modes where just things go haywire, you know? Like, kind of like SU or something like that in Star Rail. Like, you know, just a, a, a playground for chaos. More battle rank criteria will be added as well. Some combat stages will, will introduce new challenge targets beyond time limits. So maybe like, don't die um, or clear like under a certain threshold of health. Something like that. Something different from just time. All right. An uh, agent accompany mode will be added. Agent accompany mode. Proxies will be able to hang out with their favorite agents in the city. Oh, nice. And interact with them. So different from the trust missions. Also be able to continuously improve the models for some agents. Like Hoshimi Miyabi. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay, it's not that bad. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Honestly, I agree with this guy right here. At the bottom of the screen, he says, hot take, I like Miyabi's eye spacing. I think it's totally fine to have a character who seems really cool, like with their moveset and their, you know, their sword and their flips and stuff like that and the cutscene. But then you get to meet them and they kind of look kind of derpy and... They act a little funny. I, I think that's totally fine. You know what I mean? Like for someone to have a cool intro, but then you, you get to meet the person, you get to meet them and understand their personality, and they're kind of like funny. You know, like if you saw when she talks to Gun and she's like, "I I went through our graduation photos, and you know, I remember the note that you told me or something like that." And she's like, "True justice or whatever." Like you know, like it's it's funny to just get to meet the person and see how they are but i think it's it looks fine but i get it though right i get it like the, the eye space thing it does seem kind of far it does seem kind of far it do be kind of far so i i get it i get it but i just found it funny how it's like we're gonna work on our our, our models a little bit uh mainly miyabi <laughs> wink wink you know to provide proxies with a more improved visual experience okay <laughs> that's the funniest one uh, the saying it without saying it. A client resource management function will be added. Proxies will be able to reduce her packet size. Nice. Nice. So you'll be able to make the game smaller uh, by getting rid of certain files. And then, yeah. And there's the actual video for it. The video, I believe, I, I was told it just kind of went over the same things. Um, and it just, you know, it was just the devs talking about it as well. But, Yeah. That was mostly their own TLDR as they posted. Um, kind of defeats the purpose because it's actually kind of a long <laughs> paragraph for TLDR. But no, overall, the future is looking pretty bright for Triple Z. Um, I think 
you know, we can let them cook and give them some time because certain things that they're changing, they were not ready for, like I mentioned earlier. So give them time to make the change and then make changes to their changes. You know what I mean? Like they got to make the change first and then finalize it afterwards. So I'm going to uh, expect a good amount of bugs and expect a good amount of uh, like a jank things coming up just because that's how game dev can be. You know, when you plan things that you weren't originally optimized for, it might go a little haywire. So I'm going to let them cook, you know, let them cook. Let, let them cook. Let them cook. Yeah, I kind of feel bad. I was like kind of watching through and, uh, you know, the other guys like this is a lot of work you guys have to do a lot of animation work and you know what I mean? A lot of uh, a lot of like engineering to do and the guy and uh, I think it's why why? Yeah, why is like, well, I feel like we kind of have to. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, OK, <laughs> dang. Uh, I, but yeah, I mean, thank you so much, you know, if anything, but, oh shoot, there you go. But it, it is a more in-depth view of it. Um, I will watch the video in full separately, but for now, I just want to go over the changes because we also have Genshin's changes. So we have the developer discussion for November 25th, uh, skip. Oh, for Spiral Abyss. Oh, that's, that's, that's good though. Skip feature for Spiral Abyss and exploration rewards. Or limited time area exploration rewards. Limited time area. Let's get into it. So we got new limited time area exploration rewards and in future versions. There'll be limited time areas to explore. Oh, so like, like some Milanka, stuff like that. GAA. Reward collection period will last for two versions. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Additionally, for the new areas of 5.0, we will include Bastion of Unembered Flames. Wait, I'm not following. If you have already met the aspiration requirements for Anniversary 5.0, you'll be able to claim these rewards soon as the new version's release. They must be claimed by the end of 5.2. So it's saying. There will be limited time area exploration rewards whenever a new... Oh, the rewards. I'm dumb. Okay. I see. I thought I was saying that area was limited. So, for a certain amount of time, there will be rewards for just exploring the area. But the rewards will only be available for a certain time. Okay, that's cool. So, you get rewarded for exploring. Alright. Dang. So, you better hurry up. <laughs> you, better, you better explore. Don't suck on exploration. But I feel like that'll happen naturally, though, if you're actively playing. So, uh, Also, don't miss out on your free stuff for the Kanich quest or the Mulani quest um, or the Archon quest. You have until October 8th. So that's nice. Starting from the last, the latest Lunar Phase for all Abyss 5.1, so October 16th, uh, you'll be able to use the skip feature. So what do you have to do to get it? Clear floor 12 with full stars in the previous phase. Cool. Start from floor 11. That's a W. Um, I feel like that's something that I just was waiting for to happen, but also I'm not like that excited for it. Cause I was like, you know, it'd be great to not have to massacre the little Syrians every single <laughs> time the abyss resets. Um, but yeah, that is a big W. It's just, it's, I, I, I was expecting it for such a long time. So it's finally just here. It's like, you know, nice. It is nice to see Genshin finally, like Genshin will either come out the gate and have a feature that's not even in Star Rail or Triple Z, or they'll just catch up and have the same feature later. You know what I mean? So you, you never know what you're going to get. And then you can claim rewards for floor nine directly. If you finish from 11, I see. Okay. You can claim all chamber bounties for the skip floors directly via the pop-up. Nice. So when you open it up, you just get the next ones. Man. I mean, floor 9 and 10 were super easy anyways, but it's going to be so fast now. Like, unless Abyss is just, like, ridiculously gets a, gets a crazy, uh, like, difficulty spike. I mean, it's going to be so fast. You're going to be in and out with, with this system. But it's not anytime. Oh, wait, you know what? 
Dang, September's almost over. So this will be fairly soon, actually. It is the next of this. You get all the rewards. Primo gems. Nice. All right. Be able to skip past the floors. Nice work. You'll be able to open the open multiple artifact chests in one go to reduce the number of repeated <laughs> operations required. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Uh, currently, as of now, you click on it. It opens up an artifact. Close it. Click it again. Artifact. Close it. Click it again. Artifact. You know what I mean? So now you can just kind of open them all up at once, which is nice. It's about the little things, man. It's about the little things. That's what I'm talking about. The little things. Optimized character building experience. In previous versions, you ever found yourself having to constantly switch between different scenes, different screens when building characters? Yep. Yeah, I know that game. Why is this faded out? The re to reach the next level, Paimon needs 12 blue ones, but she only has six, so she needs to craft six more. I'll say Paimon short on green materials too, but plus she's got to craft this many blue ones, a green one, so enhance this weapon, not to mention it. Okay, I see. <laughs> eh? Paimon's forgotten what she's been meant to be crafting for in the first place. Yeah. They, you can see that they're trying to, like, you know, pick up the pace, you know? Uh, so, ooh, that's actually really good. It's what, I, yeah, it's like, there's always so many helpful things that's not in the game. You know what I mean? Like people on YouTube, you know, people on HioLab, people on Twitter, people who take the time and open up these, uh, you know, image creator apps and make this stuff themselves. You know and, and make it for the community so we can open it up and see what a character needs right like the the spreadsheet of a character's materials here it is finally just in the game thank you thank you got your crystals your, your, your talent books you know uh weapon stuff if he needs it enemy drops yeah that's great there you go so now you know what you need so you can see you can find a calculate character ascension. You can calculate it too. Level ascension and talent books individually. Nice. Elemental burst skill attack. Oh, don't include. Oh no. Oh yeah, that's good. This is very good. This is very good. When you click craft materials, the system will automatically detect the amount of materials required, making the crafting process more precise, convenient, and minimizing waste. Oh yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. That is a W. That is a freaking W. That is nice. You can see it if you uh, if you try and like level up a character, but that's only for the level up screen. It's not for like talent and stuff like that. So, because you, you you'll sit there and level ninety a character, and you're like, all right, I'm good, and you go to the talents, and you're like, oh shoot, I have no stuff for the talents. So, yes, I I literally I've been using stuff like this right here. Look at this. This is what I use. Just, it's just an ascension calculator. If I want a triple crown, uh, level 90 albedo, I do I calculate it and I see all the things that I need. You know, that's that's what I would do. But now it's in the game, so there you go. You can see when you set the characters, characters you recently acquired or leveled up, but it's right at the top, making it more convenient for you. Not oh okay, recently obtained or trained characters, trained characters. Um, the maximum craftable amount will be shown and these source information for the craft, for character development items. Okay. Oh, craftable amounts of the previous one. So if you have the gray, you can make this many greens. If you have the blue, you can make that many. Yeah. Whatever the previous one was. Okay. Uh, other interface feature optim optimizations. As we update the adventurer's handbook, trounce the main screen will sort trounce the main from newest to oldest. Nice, yeah, because it, it was actually descending before, now it's ascending. So you'd have to scroll all the way down to Guitar, like you know, but now it's just the, it's just the first one. Nice. Like I said, it's all about the little things, man. Alright, display or Adventure handbook, the default display page option or optimization. 
First time you open an adventure handbook, each time you log in, the conventions and guide tabs will be displayed first if there is any unfinished content in those tabs. All right, so now it'll be like in your face, like, hey, you didn't finish this yet. To help quickly choose suitable artifacts. Custom artifact filtering for characters. Shut your mouth, hold on. You can create custom artifact filter plans for individual characters and the system will record each character's plan. Hold on. Wait, no, hold on. Is it? Is that it? No, is that it? Let's keep reading. When you perform operations of the sorting and filtering artifact sets or fixes for artifact components, your selection will be saved. The next time you access the artifact selection menu for that character, the results of your previous selection will be displayed automatically. When you acquire new artifacts or re-enter the page of the character from whom the filter has been set, the newly obtained artifacts will also be sorted according to the filter plan that was previously set. So it'll help you find artifacts you want to use more quickly. Uh, uh, that's not exactly, that's still not exactly what it was asking for. <laughs> that's still not it. We're a little bit closer. One step at a time. We'll, we'll get there. But, um, let me, let me play around with this when it comes out though. Cause may, maybe I'm misunderstanding it. May, maybe it is very helpful. I mean, they're all like somewhat helpful, but what we want is just like how you can set up a preset for your teams, Raiden, Sing Cho, Shangling, Bennett, whatever team, right? And you would name it Raiden National, and that would be your team, just like how it is in the actual game. All we want is that same thing, but for each, every individual character, and instead of characters, it's artifacts. All we want is just an artifact preset. That's it. That's it. If I have golden troop on my Chiori, I would name it Chiori build. And it would be the golden troop set with the specific pieces that I put in the preset. That's it. Not filters like this, not fast equipped, not, you know, what other, what most people use based off of data, just an artifact preset. You ever played Modern Warfare 2? You, you got your freaking, uh, you know, what was it again? I forgot all the guns in that game. But you got your ACR, you got your Semtexes. You know, you, you pick your class, and everything that you want is there. That's it. That's what we want, Hayo. That, that's what we want. Not not this, not the filters, not the fast equipped. Artifact preset. That's it. It's actually the most easiest thing over all that you've done so far. <laughs> like out of everything else, that would be the easiest thing. Just give us like 10 slots. We can pick the five artifacts and name them. And then we go to the character and that character will have those 10 slots of presets to pick from. And we can just pick a build for that character. You can have physical Zhongli. You can have your archaic Petra Zhongli. You can have your tenacity Zhongli. You can have your, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. That's all we want. That's it. And that's it. So yeah. So overall, uh, pretty good one though, all things considered. You can skip the abyss floors, uh, more rewards, you know, more primos is more primos for the limited time area uh, rewards. So just explore the area when it comes out to secure your rewards. Um, Skipping the Abyss Flores 9 and 10 if you finish 12. This is probably the best part right here. That's awesome. Just the the in-game in game building your character. Um, nice and neat optimizations for the adventure book. And then we're getting closer with the artifacts. We're not quite there yet, but I'm sure this will be a, a, be a help. But come on, come on. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. You're almost there. And then uh, going back to Triple Z, just a lot of future plans. 
and a lot of things that we just were looking forward to. Um, and they're working hard. They're working hard. You can tell. So, uh, hope you guys get some sleep. <laughs> I hope you guys get some rest. Don't work too hard. Triple Z devs. We love you guys. And we thank you so much for all that you did, that you do. Uh, but yeah, take it easy. Don't, don't work too hard. <laughs> Don't work too hard because this is insane. So they're, they're just cha they're changing so much. I just want to give a, a big shout out to Triple Z devs, and I want to give a big shout out to Kiro Game devs too. I've been I've been seeing here and there a lot of the Withering Waves uh, stuff as well. Just a big shout out to those dev dev teams that've just been putting in the work to like listen to their audience. You know, they, they've been really heavy on feedback. So. That's just, that's just a good thing to hear as a, as a consumer and as a viewer, you know, as, as a player. But yeah, overall, Triple Z stuff got some good stuff coming up in the later patches. Um, let them cook. Let them cook. Let them cook. If you guys want, I will watch the whole video uh, in full separately. But in a little bit, we actually may have an A-ring drip market. So we'll see if we do, but if not... That'll be all for me. Now we'll catch you guys in the next one.